Right, we're going to look at functions today and first of all we're going to work out what is a function and we can look at these different relations and we're going to try and work out which is a function. So anytime we can graph a relationship we can call that a relation but not all relations are functions and there's a thing called the vertical line test to help us. If you draw vertical lines along your graph and it only crosses at one point then it's a function like this one. Similarly here we draw vertical lines it only crosses at one point it's a function. And this one doesn't cross at one point, it crosses at two points. So it's not a function. And this is called the vertical line test. Now we can just demonstrate with a couple more. So what I'll do is I'm going to call up this function and I want you to think about the vertical line test. Is this going to be a function? Right, let's run the vertical line test. And it goes all the way through. And it is a function, this relation between here and here, because it only crosses once. Let's do this one. Have a think about it. Right, is it a function? Run the vertical line test. And in your mind's eye, that's what you should be doing, and it's a function too. What about this one? Is this one going to be a function? Let's have a look at it, and we can see it's not a function. There are two points well, before even this where it will cross, so therefore it's not a function. What about that one? Here we go, let's run the function, and we can see it's not. Again, it crosses at two points. So we can see what makes something a function. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at using functions. Now functions can be written in several ways. And one way is to write g of x equals x minus 4 over x. Another way where this might be written in some texts is that it might be g is such that x maps onto x minus 4. 4 over x. So the little double dot is such that x goes becomes x minus 4x. That's a new value of x. So you've got two ways um, which you can write out your functions. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to try and work out how to use this. So we want to do g of 1. So that means everywhere is an x, we put the 1. So we put 1 because g of 1 is replacing the x in the brackets. So it's going to be 1 minus 4 over 1. And that's minus 3, so that gives us... So that's minus 4, so that gives us minus 3. All right, g of 4. So g of 4 will equal 4 minus 4 over 4. So that's 4 minus... 4 over 4 is 1. 4 minus 1 equals 3. g of minus 1. I'm going to run out of space, and I'll leave you the last couple to check. Now, if you're in my class and you've got the textbook, you'll be able to look up the answers. Um, so, uh, if not, you're not in the class, and you're just watching this video later, then get your teacher to have a look at your answers afterwards. So anyway, g minus 1. So you've got minus 1, e, uh, minus 4 over minus 1. So 4 divided by minus 1 is minus 4. Minus and minus gives a plus, so that's plus 4, so that's going to give us... 3. And you can just put the last two in if you like. And what we could do is I could just um, menu 1, just show you how to put that into your calculator. So what we could do, we could do 1, um, sorry, minus 4 divided by 1. And none of that went in, so let's just get to the right place. That was silly of me. So we're going to do 1 minus 4 divided by 1. And press execute. And what we can do is you can just go back in here and if you really want you could just use the same pattern delete the one so in this case we're going to put the four and you can put the four here and you can work it out in fact what i'll do is i'll just work out on the purposes in the video so you can pause the video now if you want to have a go at these two so g of minus four i'll just tell you the answers rather than spoiling the worksheet so you're going to get minus four divided by minus four is minus one that becomes a plus so minus four plus one is going to be minus three for this one and minus a half four divided by minus a half is going to be um minus eight minus and minus a plus so you've got minus a half plus eight, that's going to give you seven and a half when you combine those. Um, next on this sheet, when my thing cratches up. So next on the sheet is another question for you to have a go at. Now I'm going to go through this one here, okay? And what we've got is we've got some algebra to do with finding this in its simplest form. So part A, we want to do f of 3x. So everywhere there's an x here, here we're going to replace with the 3x is what we're going to do so we've got x squared so we just put 3x into there 
So the 3x goes where the x was in the function. So that gives us 3x all squared. So 3 squared is 9. x squared is x squared. Same again. f of x over 2. Everywhere is an x. We're going to put x over 2. And a common mistake here might be to forget to square the 2. So you get x squared over 4 on this one. This one. Now notice the 3 is outside the f of x. So you've got to be careful here. Don't put the 3 inside. So actually, this is really simple because f of x hasn't changed. f of x is just x squared. And we've just got 3 times f of x, which is just 3x squared. So notice the difference when the 3 is outside and when the 3 is inside. Okay. Now we're going to do 2fx minus 1 plus 5. And what I'm going to do is going to just scroll that up so it doesn't go behind me. Okay. Even if it did, what you'll notice is you can see through me. So 2f of x minus 1. So let's everywhere, everywhere there's x minus 1 here is inside the f. So that's the bit that goes into the yellow bits in the function here. So we've got 2. Now f is the x squared, but we've got for x we've got x minus 1. So we've got x minus 1 where the x would go. Square that, and then we've got to add on the 5. Now you could just leave it like that. It does say simplest form. So let's just multiply out and see what we get. So we're going to get 2. This is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 once you multiply it out, plus 5. So we're going to get 2x squared times that. Get times that, you get minus 4x. Times that's 2 times 1 is 2. And then we add the 5 on and we get 7. And there's another question for you to practice the same ideas for you. Right, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at domain and range. Now, the domain of the relation is a set of values which the variables on the horizontal x-axis can take. So it's everything along the x-axis. So it's everything you put into your function. Okay, everything that can go into your function, okay, is in your domain. And what you get out is called your range, otherwise the y-axis. Okay, so we've got different ways of writing out our domain um, notation. There's a set notation. And what this means, we put little curly brackets around the outside of the domain. We write down what x, and we say this, some books use a line. Some will write it out like this. So some books will write a double dot instead of a line for such that. And this is just telling you that x is um, greater than or equal to 3. Now, if you wanted to be really, um, um, really specific, what you might say is um, x is a member of the real numbers, all the real numbers. Now, real numbers are all numbers that can be plotted on the number line such that x is greater than or equal to 3. That would be a bit more precise, telling us what type of numbers we're going to put into our domain. And generally, on this course, all the numbers you're dealing with in domains are real numbers. It's very rare that you don't. Other numbers could be integers. Okay, so they, integers could be minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So whole numbers, positive, negative. Natural numbers, which are just the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You could strangely have rational numbers, which are, anything can be written as a fraction. Okay, um, and so on. Um, all the types of things your numbers could be. But generally, you're nearly, you just about always going to see x is a member of the reals as your domain. So if you see this notation with this double line curly r, that means real numbers. They're all the numbers that can be written on the number line. So let's just look at a couple of questions. So here's an example. For each of the following, I state the domain and the range. Now the domain here is all the values of x that can go into it. Now notice it doesn't go beyond 8 minus 2 on this end of the graph. So therefore, all your x values are going to be less than 8. So the domain is x such that x is less than or equal to 8, but 8 is included. Okay. Your range is all your y values, and get now your y values will be greater or equal to minus 2. Okay, so y is such that great, y is greater or equal to minus 2. Now here, there we go, there's that curly r. We, because of the pointy arrows indicating this graph goes on forever, we can see that the x values can be any value on the number line, so therefore you just put is a member of the reals. 
Now the y values, the, ra the range, notice all the y values are bigger than minus 1. So bigger than or equal to minus 1, actually, to be specific. So let's look at these examples. You may want to pause the video now and see if you can have a go at these yourself, and then I go through them. So A, we know that the domain, so I'm going to list the domains on this line, and I'm going to list all the ranges on this line. So our domain is going to be x such that, now we can see all the x's are bigger than minus 1. And it's got a filled in dot. If that was an empty dot, that means it wouldn't be including it. But because it's a filled in dot, we include the minus 1. So I need a little minus sign there. Okay, range, we've got our y values. Now y is going to be less than 3, or less than or equal to 3. Okay, for that one. Um, I'm going to miss this one out. Well, I'm actually not going to miss this one out. What I'll do is I hopefully I'll, I can scroll down. I'll give myself a bit more space to write my answers to the next two questions. So let's just do that. There we go. So let's do um, B next. So for B, we've got our domain is going to be X is such that X. Now what's X going to be? Now notice this non-filled in dot. So that means I need to just rub this out because I've got a lower value to my X and an upper value to my X. So I could have my X is going to be bigger than minus 1. Notice don't put an equals because that's an empty filled dot. A filled in dot means I can be less than or equal to that value 5. And then for the range, my Y values is such that, okay, I'm not really a big fan of this notation, which is in this textbook. Okay, I prefer that because it gets confusing here. So I'm going to use such that um, my y value is going to be less than 3 and bigger than minus 1, or less than or equal to 3, and it's going to be bigger than, um, sorry, plus 1. 1 is the value there. So, and I'm going to have x is going to be less than or equal to 3. Doing c, we've got here, we've got x can be any value, but it won't be, if you notice, there's this dotted line. This is the name of this, this is an asymptote. Okay, it's called an asymptote. The, the curve doesn't cross it. So therefore, x can't be equal to 2. So therefore, our domain will be x is such that um, actually, I would write x is a member of the reals such that x is not equal to 2. And our, domain, and our range will be y is also a member of the reals. But what we can see is y is never equal to minus 1. So y is not equal to minus 1. Okay, here's some more for you to try out here. I'm going to leave these for you to have a go. All right, so have a go at these. Um, again, you can look at the answers in the link I've left at the top of the page for those of you who've got access to my OneNote in my class. Okay, more on domain and range. State the domain and range of these functions. Now, these are special functions. What we're going to work out is what x values can we put into these. Now, what you need to remember is square root. Okay, we can't put any negative numbers into square roots. So, therefore, x minus 5 can't be less than um, 0. It's got to be bigger than 0. So x minus 5 must be bigger than 0 to put it in here. Or we can put it equal to 0 because square root of 0 is 0. So x minus 5 can be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore x is greater than or equal to 5. So what we've got is got x is a member of the reals such that x is greater than or equal to 5 for part A. For part B... Now, when we're dividing by anything, the bottom can't be equal to 0. Because if we're equal to 0, we get an undefined function. So therefore, x minus 5 is not equal to 0. So that means that x can't be equal to 5. So our domain here will be x is a member of the reals, such that x is not equal to 5. Okay. Now, we know to start off with, um, that um, here, for this bit, x minus 5 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So that gives us x is greater than or equal to 5. We also need 
1 over this, you can't have the bottom of this to be 0. So the square root of x minus 5 cannot be equal to 0. So we can't have it equaling 0 either. So therefore this one is a combination of these two where we restrict it down. So it's going to be x is a member of the reals, such that. Now if we take this out of this one, we'll get our domain. So we take the 5 out. We can't have the 5 in this one. Okay, so this one means it's greater than or equal to 5, but we can't have 1 over 0. So we've got to make sure the square root of x minus 5 is not equal to 0, and that we do that by making it greater than 5. So here's three questions for you to have a go at. And that concludes um, our introduction to functions. So in our functions, we looked at how you can tell if something is a function, how to put numbers into a function, and also how to work out the domain and the range of a function. And that's what you need to know from the end of this lesson.